Um, well, good evening. Welcome to tonight's inclusion session for the College of Charleston. Uh, my name is Devin Thompson, uh, Senior Associate Director for Admissions Events, and we are thrilled to have you all join us tonight. We have a fantastic panel um, from the college across various offices that work on our inclusion and diversity and access initiatives here at CFC. Um, a few housekeeping items as we get started. Um, we ask that you all keep yourselves muted during the event tonight. Um, I know it's an exciting time and you probably want to talk freely, but it can lead to a lot of background noise. So um, if you can keep yourselves muted, that would be great, but you're welcome to keep your screen on. Um, and then if you have questions, please enter them into the chat. Um, we will be taking questions throughout the evening. Um, so if you can put them in the chat, that'll help us kind of keep track of what's coming in. Um, I think those are all of my housekeeping announcements for now. And at this time, I'm thrilled to introduce Dr. Renard Harris, the Chief Diversity Officer at the College of Charleston. Um, Dr. Harris, I'm going to let you take it from here. Thank you, Mrs. Thompson. I appreciate it. So good afternoon or good evening, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm really thrilled to, to start this introduction. Uh, my, my goal today um, is all to- All right, um, never I, mind, that's air prompt. My goal today will be to kind of share the vision of the diversity where we are here at the College of Charleston now, kind of give you an overall summary, and then to introduce three fantastic panelists following. So, so here's one, let me start here, fully transparent. I want you to come to the College of Charleston. Now, and this is why. First of all, because it's a liberal arts college, uh, and, and that's important in terms of diversity. So let me take my few minutes to explain why it's so important. So liberal arts college, you get a chance to, to focus on a major, but at the same time, explore other areas. And, and that is a huge part of the liberal arts experience, right? The exploration while you focus on one major. How that relates to diversity is incredibly important. And this is in where we come into play. Your self-identity matters to us. How you identify. I'll, I'll use myself as an example. Black male from the South, born and raised in Mississippi, right? A lot more to me. You, if, unless I told you, you would know that I was Catholic. You would know that I was a blues musician. But all those things make me who I am. Here at the College of Charleston, because your self-identity matters at this liberal arts college, our job is to help develop that identity that you share with us. You decide your self-identity. We don't decide. That. So in terms of diversity, our whole office and many other our collaborative partners on this campus is to help develop your self-identity. And that's one of the primary reasons I would love for you to come to this college, because I think your self-identity, developing that self-identity and contributing to the world is really what I think most human beings want. How do I enact with the world in terms of career and opportunity? So I just want to start there on a broad base to be fully transparent why I think this is the, a great college, because it's liberal arts and it delves into self-identity and, and developing self-identity. All right, so let me get into more specifics about what we do to give you a summary of some of the things that come out of this office. This is the Office of Institutional Diversity. Um, we have what's called a, a module. Now, a module is, as you can imagine, not, not a very impressive word. It's a, it's a module, though, for all faculty, staff, and students to take to do exactly what I just expressed, understand self-identity and how to interact with that identity. So yeah, it's a module. You all take it and watch it, but it's not just about watching it. It's about taking it to action. Right, so if I identify from the LGBTQ community, if I identify from a certain religious perspective, if I identify in terms of racial perspective, that is important to me. And I want to be important to all my professors, my staff members and other students. So we can exercise how we engage with each other and understand each other. So the module is not just a module to take, it's a module to interact. Your first year synthesis seminar course, it's actually in that course. Last year before the pandemic, we, had, we were at about a 70% completion rate with all incoming students to take that module. This past fall, 85% of our students uh, completed it. That's important because the more we engage with that topic, the more it will become part of the tapestry of this campus. Our goal is to say diversity is part of the campus, not diversity, race, LGBTQ, religion, identity over here, campus over here. It's all supposed to be one big piece. And more importantly, it's not supposed to be linear, where you learn about diversity first, and then you take action. It all happens at the same time. We, 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 can't, we don't have time to sit back and wait for everyone to appreciate identity. It, it happens at the, beautifully at the same time. So that's important to us. Something else more specific. 
we work closely with the provost office, basically the office that is that oversees the faculty with a website called Critical Conversations. On that website, we post everything that is, that is now, right? Um, information that is hot on the topic, everything from the pandemic, any faculty or staff member doing research, having guest speakers from the pandemic to race, uh, to protest, anyone doing anything on this campus that is a critical, that is a critical conversation now, we post that information and share that information with our entire campus because we want everyone to be involved with that conversation. More importantly, we want our faculty and students to be involved with it because it may delve into how you write your papers, what you say and what you do. So what's important here is that diversity and these critical conversations, these topics aren't on an island. They are part of everything that happens here at the campus. A few more points and I'll pass it on to my, to my panelists and colleagues. We have something called crossing the system because let's be fair, you know, we all slip and fall. I know I did when I was in college. Hopefully you won't, but if you do, we have a program where every school, no matter what your major has a program, that if you, you know, your GPA finds itself in a, in a more struggling area, we have a program that you can join this, this uh, through application, join what's called Crossing the Cistern. It's a one, two, three year program, depending on the school, that will help support you, that will give you some well being activities that will that'll help you some financially to kind of get back engaged with the community. Because here's the truth once you become a college of Charleston Cougar, we don't want to let you go until you cross that, that, until you graduate, right? So we want you to stay. So just because you might be struggling in the GPA area doesn't mean we turn our backs. We call it a shared responsibility. Two more points. One called Launchpad. It's in an infant stage. Now, we just started this year. And this is, I'm going to close with this because I think, close with two more points because I think this is highly important. Launchpad is an opportunity for you to attend the liberal arts college, but at the same time, engage with your career opportunities. So once you go through this liberal arts college, focusing on a major, exploring everything that's out there, you have a career path. We have a relationship with the Career Center, the Center for Excellence of Peer Education, where students are able to take non-bearing credit courses and learn about everything that you need to get an internship, to exercise what you're learning for a career opportunity. So those are just a few points in terms of what's happening now. In closing our vision, we, we just will start our strategic plan uh, we began to already start that conversation. On our strategic plan, one of the cross-cutting themes is diversity, equity, and inclusion. What that means is this, everything in terms of that strategic plan that happens, diversity, equity, and inclusion should be the North Star for everything that happens. That means you should see DEI everywhere in whatever you're doing. So I'll close with those and introduce some of my colleagues, but again, Feel free and contact me, email and any of my colleagues. This is a very personalized experience for us. We want to make sure things happen proactively and not reactively. So when you're at the school, we know you by name and we know who to contact when you need our help. So my colleagues today, uh, Ms. Rochelle Johnson, the Director of the Multicultural Student Programs and Services. You'll hear from another colleague, Mr. Rhonda Washington, the Associate Director for Fraternity and Sorority Life. And a third colleague, Ms. Nisa Williams, the College of Charleston Black Alumni Caucus President. It's been a pleasure. I look forward to seeing you next year. I'll pass it on to Ms. Rochelle Johnson. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Rochelle Johnson. I am the director of the Office of Multicultural Student Programs and Services, where Dr. Harris's office uh, kind of handles everything institutionally, we work directly with students. We are within the Division of Student Affairs and we are the diversity and inclusion arm of student affairs. Uh, what I'd like to talk to you about is what are the resources that our office offers to students. So we are located in the Multicultural Center, which is right next door to the Addlestone Library and a four-story uh, historic, yellow historic house. So if you go to the library, all you have to do is reach your arm out and you'll be able to touch our building. Uh, the Multicultural Center provides programs and services for students. However, I wanna tell you what we offer in our building to support you at the College of Charleston. So we have a conference room, a living room, and a student 
computer and study workstation for students who are looking for space to kick back, study, you are able to um, print reports and projects in addition to what you already received through your tuition and free fees. And all printing at our um, center is free to students. We also offer a prayer and meditation space for our students who are looking for someplace quiet and peaceful to pray or meditate throughout the day. Our center is open Monday through Fridays, 8.30 to 9. I'm sorry, 8.30 to 9 on Monday through Thursday, and we close at 5 p.m. on Friday. We also offer a student beverage station uh, for students, which is totally free. So sometimes when you run out of money at Starbucks, you are more than welcome to come over and get free tea, coffee, or bottled water um, for your use. We also offer programs and events that are based in multicultural heritage and history month activities. Uh, we celebrate our graduating students before commencement with our multicultural graduation celebrations. And our mission is to bring awareness regarding multifaceted communities and empower you, the students, to be agents of social change. And in doing that, our office also facilitates the safe zone training for um, the campus community. And Safe Zone is an, is an, a training is an environment where participants can feel free to talk and learn more about the LGBTQ community, become allies, learn how to use terminology, and how to be respectful of community. Now I'm going to turn this portion over to our student, our Spectrist uh, Recruitment Coordinator, Raymond Harris, and he's going to tell you about our Spectra program. Hello, everybody. My name is Raymond, and I'm here to speak to you a little bit more about our Spectra program. Okay, this program is an awesome, awesome resource that is offered from the Multicultural Student Programs and Services. So I'm going to give you a little bit of details. All right. So um, SPECTRA stands for the Speedy Consolidation and Transition Program. That's important because this program really, really helps you bridge that gap from the end of your high school um, career to then coming into college. And the way that it helps you actually make that transition smoothly is by um, three key ways. Um, now, first, if the COVID situation permits, um, so we're still monitoring that, but you are given the opportunity to live on campus in a residence hall. This is important because you have the, an opportunity to meet and network and communicate with other people. So these are incoming freshmen, just like yourself, students who are on the same journey, the same path like you are on. Um, in addition to meeting other students, you're also able to meet, just like you are today, face-to-face -face with a lot of different faculty and staff members on campus that represent diversity, um, the offices that represent diversity, that are there for resources, that are there to help you out. It's important to know where to go when you're in a time of need. And that's something that, that's information that you are able to get from the SPECTRA program. Um, also, SPECTRA gives you a benefit because you get to, take two, um, two college classes. So you come into the college with two courses under your belt with successful completion of the SPECTRA program. Now I know leading up to now summer school has kind of been like, a, uh, it's a bad thing, you shouldn't be in summer school. All that's about to change. In college, I'm a student myself now, I'm telling you, taking classes over the summer only puts you ahead. It helps you graduate sooner. It helps you get, um, wrap up your career, get your degree, and start making more money in the real world and doing what your heart's passion and, and what your heart's desires are. So that is why it's a benefit to have those two courses. Um, so 
definitely lots lots of uh, resources and benefits for you. The space for the program is limited. So we do encourage you to apply immediately. Um, if you are coming to the college and we all know that each and every one of you that can hear my voice are, um, then it's important for you to be a part of this program and take advantage of these benefits that Spectra offers. Um, and I'll leave you with one tidbit. When I was in Spectra, the, the person that I was paired with as my roommate, I actually still talk to to this day and he's my daughter's godfather. So the, the relationships, the connections, the experiences are lifelong. All right, now this is another program that we offer from the Multicultural Student Programs and Services. Um, this is called Mentoring Matters. This is awesome support for you after Spectra. So this program pairs you with a mentor who is normally, um, or who is um, actually could be a previous Spectra student or a faculty or staff member. And they really serve as your pipeline, your shoulder um, for, for you to lean on as you figure out and, and as you um, navigate through those nuances of the freshman year. Uh, so while you're transitioning, Spectra helps you get a jump start. And we don't just leave you hanging. We also pair you with a mentor and you still have that support. You can always come to our office for the programs and services that Ms. Rochelle discussed earlier, but you're also given a one-on-one -on -one resource in the form of a, a student faculty or staff member who is here for you, who is here to answer your questions, for you to vent to, to help you um, with any issue that, that arises. So. This is a great resource and this is a way that we help support you after Spectra. Thank you, Raymond. And so to wrap things up for the, the Office of Multicultural Student Programs and Services, just wanted to introduce you all to our staff. Um, I introduced myself. Our assistant director is Linda Keller. Linda is a co-advisor to students. She works with our Spectra Spectra program students and looking at their class schedules um, and helping them to figure out um, if the credit hours they're taking is something that um, is doable or sometimes she will advise them if she thinks that they may be taking on a little bit too much. Um, Ms. Linda comes to us from the School of Education where she worked there for uh, 18 years where she advised students who were um, going in the, teal, uh, the field of teaching. And Ms. Ayanna Johnson is our administrative support staff. She, when you submit your Spectra application, she is the person who receives that information and can help answer any questions or she will forward uh, questions to us and you just heard from the newest member of our staff, Raymond Harris, who is really awesome. So if you have questions, you can also reach out to him. Um, and at the bottom, we have our contact email and telephone number. And so at this point, I am gonna turn everything over to Mr. Rhonda Washington. Good evening, everyone. I am simply going to say welcome to the College of Charleston because we know that you have already made the best decision and that is to hit the road and come to Charleston and to be on those beautiful bricks at the College of Charleston. I have the pleasure of serving as the Associate Director of the Higdon Center at the College of Charleston where I advise all NPHC and culturally based organizations. And if you're a first generation college student, you may end up saying, what is an NPHC organization? What is a culturally based organization? Well, ask that question no more. I am here to tell you what those organizations are. So I want you to meet the awesome Greeks at the College of Charleston who serve in our NPHC organizations, which are historically black Greek letter organizations and our one culturally based organizations. Those are Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated, and we have one culturally based organization 
Lambda, Theta, Phi, Latin fraternity. You may not see an organization that is culturally based that you may identify with. That is perfectly fine. At the College of Charleston, we are inviting you to be a part of groups that you identify with. So that might be very well you starting your own organization. As the associate director, I am here to support you. Before I go into NPHC and the culturally based organizations and what our expectations are, First, we're asking that you are first coming to the College of Charleston to gain an excellent education. We are looking for those leaders who have high scholastic standards, meaning your first priority is that you're not coming to the College of Charleston to be Greek. You are coming to the College of Charleston to get a education as well as to graduate. So we are looking for those individuals who know that academics are important. We're looking for leaders if you have served in leadership roles in high schools, uh, wherever that you are now, we want you to join our organizations. We are also looking for those students who dare to make an impact on the College of Charleston's campus as well as their local communities. We are located right close next to Rochelle and MSPS. We are on the other side of Adelstone Library in the Blue Building, Blue House, known as the Higdon Center. Currently out of the nine organizations, we have seven of them active at the College of Charleston. And we're just excited to have Phi Beta Sigma back on campus who will be reactivating in the fall. There are so many opportunities as a first generation student that you may have, or you might have a legacy status. That means you may have a mom, father, grandmother that are already in these organizations that you may have pre-selected. But one thing that I tell my students, get the College of Charleston experience. See what the organizations are doing on your local campus to see whether or not they identify with your morals, your standards, and everything that you're looking for in an organization. Our students realize that we must give back to our community. Even though we're in a pandemic, they have been doing an amazing job with virtual community service to local communities, Ronald McDonald House, They've also, during this pandemic, made sure that they average, maintain a high GPA. I am proud to say out of all the NPHC organizations and all the organizations on campus, our NPHC organizations and culturally based organizations have the highest GPA amongst all Greek letter organizations at the College of Charleston. That includes the Panhellenic as well as IFC fraternities. So your first year experience is gonna look a little bit different from other organizations. We're asking that you maintain your high GPAs. We ask that you get community service at the College of Charleston in your local community before you think about joining an organization. Why is that? We wanna make sure that when you join an NPHC or culturally based organization that you are fully established at the College of Charleston. That means that you have understand your role at the College of Charleston, you understand and navigated the college, the Charleston community, and you're almost an expert at being a college student. They have upcoming events. You can follow their social media pages. We ask that you follow CFC underscore NPHC to kind of get your foot in the door and also see what's going on at the College of Charleston. By following that Instagram page, you will have access to events, you will have access to community service events, and you will have access to all of the organizations at the College of Charleston that fall under the NPHC culturally based organization umbrella. My goal as the associate director is to serve as the first resource for you. So if you're interested in joining any of our organizations, you have me at your fingertips. My email address is easy and it's actually wonderful. It's washingtondc at cmc.edu. I can't wait to see your smiling faces at the College of Charleston. And next, I believe we have Ms. Nisa Williams. Good evening and welcome future alumni of the College of Charleston. My name is Nisa Williams. I'm Spectra, class of 91, 
and College Charleston graduate class of 95. It is a pleasure and an honor to be with you all tonight. I want to welcome you and welcome your families because we are gonna help you through this college experience. It's my goal as the president of the Black Alumni Council to ensure that every freshman that comes to the College of Charleston is assigned a mentor. Your mentor will be someone who is either in your chosen career field or in an organization that you're interested in being a part of. And it could be a one year program or it could be your mentor for four years. So please, we just want you to know, especially parents, let you know that when you send your children to the College of Charleston, that we are going to be with them every step of the way from the organizations they join, to mentorships, to study abroad, to any of those things that they want to do, and also be that big sister, big brother for all those conversations and all those things that maybe you're not ready to have that conversation with mom and dad, but you need some outlook on making wise decisions and wise choices. So please feel free to contact me at any time. Uh, you can reach me at NISA, N-E-Y-S-A, 1922 at gmail.com. And you can also go to our website and have information on our executive board. And we look forward to meeting all of you. And we look forward to being able to call you COC alumni one day. Thank you. So, so thank you, Mrs. Johnson, Mrs. Washington, and Ms. Williams. So I just want to say before I move past the, the mic onto the next moderator, the folks you just met um, are, if they don't know, they know someone who does know. And that's what you want, people who have the connections to what you might need and the resources that you need access to. This next moderator, I, I just have to give a shout out. His name is Mr. Kenyatta Grimmage. And I want to share this, and he's heard me share this before, so hopefully he won't be too shy about it. I heard Mr. Grimmage give a presentation one time, and he shared as, as a representative of the, of the admissions office. When he recruits a student here and it doesn't work out, he takes it personally because he was the one that assisted that student coming to the College of Charleston. And I'll have to admit, as a parent, that meant a great deal to me. If I was to say to my daughter, choose this college, I, want, I would want to know there's someone there to take it personally if it didn't work out for my daughter. So I'm very, um, I, I've always admired him. He's a fantastic gentleman. I'm gonna pass the mic on to Mr. Kenyatta Grimmage. Mr. Grimmage. <laughs> Oh man, don't do me like that, Dr. Harris. Set me up like that. Expectations are very high now. Uh, like Dr. Harris said, my name is Kenyatta Grimmage and I'm the Associate Director in Admissions for Access Initiatives and Pre-College Programs. That's a long title, but basically means that I recruit all students all across the state of South Carolina, but my emphasis is on uh, making sure the College of Charleston campus is diverse, all right? Um, so here's the thing. You've, you've heard from a lot of people so far, and up until this point, you've heard from a lot of people at the College of Charleston trying to recruit you and, you know, talk to you a little bit about the great opportunities at the College of Charleston, you know, but I often believe that uh, it's always great to hear from our students, right? You are students who are about to make a huge decision about your, the next four years of your life, where you will spend it at. So it's very important that you talk to current students who are actually, you know, taking part of the journey at the College of Charleston so they can actually talk to you. Um, not to say that we lie about stuff at the College of Charleston because we don't, but I think people on your age level would be better uh, advocates for the opportunities that are here at the College of Charleston. So uh, we've created this student panel presentation just for you guys to be able to hear from our students and uh, hopefully towards the end of our panel, we'll have opportunity for you to have questions for our students. I don't know, I didn't see that built into the schedule, but I'm hoping that you guys will be able to put some questions in the chat that you might have for our students. I did tell my students to get on on time. I didn't realize we're gonna fly through this. So uh, I do know we have two already on here, but I was waiting on one or two other. So uh, with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I think we have Vernon uh, Kennedy on here and. Uh, is Vernon on here yet? If Vernon is here, I'm gonna go ahead and get Vernon to introduce himself. Uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, where he's from, what he's majoring in, um, and yeah, what what town, what, what's your hometown? So we'll go to Vernon Kennedy. Thanks, Mr. Grimmich. Um, good evening, everyone. Like Mr. Grimmich said, my name is Vernon Kennedy. I am a senior here at the College of Charleston, graduating in May. 
Looking forward to that. I am from Winsboro, South Carolina. Uh, I'm majoring in molecular biology and I am a part of the Honors College. And I chose to come to the College of Charleston largely because of the liberal arts education, uh, but also because of the intimate experience that you get with your classmates and your professors here at CFC. Um, so I'll pass it on to one of the other panelists to do the introduction. Hey guys, um, I'm Brianna Fedraza. I am a senior here at the college. I am majoring in finance with, in minoring in marketing. Um, I chose, oh, I'm from Hollywood, South Carolina. Um, I, I chose to came to the College of Charleston because number one, I'm really close to home. So I see my dad, he works here in downtown all the time. Um, so I get to see him whenever I want to. And also the first time I came on campus, I instantly, felt at home. Um, usually the schools around the area will bring like elementary school students, middle school students, but I was never brought to college. The first time I came to college was for a move event that we do um, through the admissions office and everybody made me feel at home instantly. The students, the um, Mr. Grimmage, um, Ms. Counts, everybody made me feel at home. So that's why I knew that this was the place for me. Hey guys, I'm Sarge. I'm a senior in the Honors College here at CFC, and I've got a major in biology and minors in biomedical physics and business administration. I'm actually from the small town of Boiling Springs, South Carolina. It's up near Spartanburg. No one's ever heard of it, but it's fine. Um, and I chose CFC because I know it was a school that would be perfect for me. I'm a big people person. And I love being able to know everyone around me and whatnot. So Charleston really gave me that environment of like a, a small town feel or like a close knit community that I knew I'd want. Okay, thank you, Sarge. Uh, okay, so uh, we had one other person, but uh, they canceled on me, so we're going to move forward. Uh, so my first question to you guys, both all of you guys already explained why you chose CFC. Um, tonight's session is about inclusion. Um, it's, and then one of the most important elements to inclusion is obviously campus involvement, because you have to, in, in order to feel that sense of inclusivity, you have to get involved. So talk to us a little bit about uh, some things that you're involved in on campus and how, how, that, how has that contributed to you feeling inclusive at the College of Charleston? Uh, any of you guys can go ahead and start on that question. Um, I can take it first. So uh, I'm a part of several organizations here at the college, but one that I will highlight tonight um, is Student Ambassadors through the Office of Admissions. So this is an organization, we work closely with Mr. Grimmage actually, um, but our goal is to improve the recruitment and the retention of first generation and minority students here at the College of Charleston. And that's an organization that I encountered before I was even a student at CFC. Um, I participated in the MOVE program. I'm not sure if any of you guys are familiar with that, but I did several of the MOVE experiences. Um, and I, like Bree said, I felt that community and that sense of belonging here at the College of Charleston to the point that when I got to CFC, um, Student Ambassadors was actually the first organization that I joined. Uh, and I'm still a member of Student Ambassadors where I actually serve as the president of this organization um, this year. And Student Ambassadors has definitely been, um, it's honestly been a family for me. I know that's pretty cliche to say, um, but I can't honestly think of another word to describe it. Um, from the other members of the club to people who are um, advisors of the club and workers in the Office of Admissions, it's really nice to just have that sense of belonging there. Um, it's also nice because I transitioned from the Spectra program as well that you guys heard about earlier. So I had a family coming in from that and many of us also joined Student Ambassadors. So it was really a nice experience to um, be a person of color on a predominantly white campus, but to have so many individuals who look like yourself and are on the same path as you and you have that relationship that you've already formed um, and you're, you're able to continue to form because uh, it does take a village to get through whatever it is you're trying to get through in life. Um, so I'm super grateful for my involvement with Student Ambassadors. I'm also a part of the Gospel Choir, which is another group uh, that I found a family with here at CFC. So I grew up as a church kid, uh, singing on the choir, going to Bible studies, revivals, all that good stuff. 
Um, so it was really nice to also have that subset of my culture here on campus with me uh, via the gospel choir. And I'll pick that right up. Um, so I have a story much like Vernon's. Um, Vernon and I actually met at a MOOC, pro um, at a MOOC program. Um, and then we went to, into Spectre together. And now we both serve on the executive board of um, Civ Ambassadors. So we came, became a member and eventually became, became part of the executive board. Um, so the College of Charleston has honestly been so welcoming to me in so many ways. Um, I've found mentors within all, all different um, departments. For example, Mr. Grimmage in the admissions office. He's been with me, with me like there for me ever since before I was ever a student. He invested that time into me because he knew, like he knows, he knows when he talks to somebody and he, and he pushes for you to do well. Um, Mr. Rhonda Washington um, from the Hagnan Center. She's always been there for me for, for school things, for personal things, for anything. She's always been there. Ms. Linda Keller from the Multicultural Center has always been there for me since Spectra. Um, they're great resources. Even Ms. Wendy Stevens from the School of Business. Um, she was my advisor, academic advisor at first, and then she became the she became part of the School of Business and she's always made me feel welcomed. Um, usually in the School of Business, uh, there's not many students of color and she made it known that I was just as um, accepted and welcomed as anybody anybody else. Um, so everybody has been has given me the opportunity to do what I need to do, whether it's speak to um, a student coming in or if I'm working on something personal, they've always provided um, a safe space for me to do that. I'd say uh, my time on SGA, I'm no longer part of SGA, but <clears throat> during my sophomore year, I was on SGA and a little bit of my junior year were probably some of the best experiences I've had in an organization at CFC. Uh, student government is very different here than it is in, than what it was in high school. Uh, I was working with a group of many people who were like motivated to make changes and were actually able to implement changes and with a lot of different programs throughout. I actually met one of my good friends, uh, Jasmine Shabazz, through student government. And uh, now she's on to great things with Planned Parenthood and other uh, kind of minority supporting and other kind of uh, agencies. She's actually on several boards and stuff too. But another organization that I'm a part of here that was really great for me was uh, ACTS. It's actually a professional chemistry kind of society or whatnot. And it's a group of about 20 something, 30 something people. It's very small, it's very tight knit. But the great thing I love about that is I can, I know I can reach out to any of them for help when I need it. And I know that they'll be there to support me through whatever I need and whatnot. And I think that's really the beauty of CFC is that you can find niches, even as small as an interest in chemistry and develop groups around them that you know will support you in beyond just that particular interest. That's great. Um, this is my last question before I open up the floor for any students who might want to start putting questions in the uh, in the chat box. I think we have about, I want to say that they gave us until 7.15, I believe. So uh, we'll open the floor up to students who might have questions. But my last question is, uh, do you feel like CFC has set you up for success? I know many of you are seniors, um, in particular. So, Matt, all three of you guys are seniors. I'm tripping. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, you guys are seniors now, right? So do you feel like CFC and the opportunities that you were provided at the college have set you up for success? Because I really, you know, most of the students, I think you guys are Generation Z now. So they want to know like, hey, am I, if I'm gonna invest in a college, what's my return on that investment? Am I gonna be able to be successful when I leave here? Am I gonna be able to get a job? So do you feel like, talk a bit a little bit about your experiences and do you feel like college starts to set you up for success moving forward? I think my time here at CFC has definitely been well worth it. Um, I, I don't know if y'all heard my minors, but I'm, I'm spread out across campus. I'm very into the sciences and in the business school, but CFC has allowed me to pursue interests and curiosities that I feel like I wouldn't have been able to in a normal school with a much more rigorous kind of focused non-liberal arts view. 
And because of that, I've run into people who are leading projects. I've been able to get funding for summer research every year that I've been here. So I have just packed, been able to pack my resume with these interesting experiences that I can pursue careers in. And um, I actually came into CFC wanting to go into med school, but because of my experience here, I had the backup of, I can go into microbial research if I want. I could go into administration if I want. And I think that's the beauty of uh, CFC and a liberal arts education. Yeah, um, just to kind of echo what Sarge said, I definitely think that the liberal arts education and the size of the College of Charleston is particularly unique. Um, and it set me up for success in numerous ways, ways that I honestly didn't even imagine when I came to the college as a freshman. Um, so I'm also heavily involved with research on campus. I've been doing that for several years uh, and I love my research project. Um, I've been able to do things kind of like what Sarge was saying that you really just often don't find at the undergraduate level. Um, I've spent so many hours in the lab. I've written so many grants and I've had my research funded through different uh, campus organizations that I'm super appreciative for. Um, but it's just been an experience that you often don't find until you get to graduate school levels. And that's particularly important because as you're, first of all, um, post-secondary programs are becoming more and more competitive. So you're always gonna wanna have something in your pocket or something on your resume that makes you stand out from other applicants as you move on past undergrad. Um, and CFC has definitely gave, given me that experience. I've been able to travel to multiple conferences. I've presented my research uh, through posters, oral presentations, videos, and many of these I've actually won awards for. Um, and it's because of the superb men mentorship that I've received here at the College of Charleston and how getting into these incredible research labs was, it was accessible to me versus if I was at a larger school um, with 30,000 plus students um, where you have a bunch of competitive pre-med students who are uh, trying to get into those opportunities. Um, so the availability of opportunities is something that I think has truly set me up for success um, to the point where I can confidently walk across the stage this coming May knowing that I'm headed to something better. Honestly, I feel the exact same way. Um, the people that I mentioned earlier, they never fail to email me once in a while when I haven't checked in. Um, they just to check in for personal reasons or for academic reasons. Um, I hadn't spoken to Mr. Grimmage in a long time. He called my cell phone. He was like, hey, like, what's up? Like, what are you doing? Um, I know that other mentors that I've had are they, they check my they check my degree works. They're checking how I'm doing in my classes, how how I did on my midterms. They're always checking. And even though, even if I don't ask them to, um, they'll message me like, hey, like what's going on in your marketing class? And then I'll explain. Um, and they're just on top of it. They have so many students that they tend to. And for them to like check on you personally when you don't even ask them to yet, um, they, it really, really feels, like very um they're they're like pushing you to do to do your best and that's that's what i love the most they're always ready to review your resume they're always like check um send me your resume like how are you doing um in the school of business i i emailed one of my professors and i was like hey so i really need an internship and i know it's real i messaged her i don't know like december 8th um she was like she got me in contact with lots of people who were looking for interns when I thought I had didn't even have a chance um to securing an internship and now I'm an intern at a wealth management company and so it's it's great having those people there for you okay I saw um one of our other students jump on um Mariana Glenn Tolan I want her to go ahead and introduce herself tell us a major uh, where she's from or her classification. Hello, everyone. Um, like Mr. Grimmage said, my name is Mariana Glenn Toland. I am a senior um, graduating in May. I am majoring in psychology and I have a minor in crime law and society, and I am from Union, South Carolina. Mariana, can you go ahead real quick and let us know why you chose CFC? Yeah. Um, so I chose CFC for a couple of reasons. One reason was the location. Um, I just felt like downtown Charleston was a place of opportunity. Um, and I just felt like it was a good business choice for me to be in the area. I loved the class size. 
Um, and really what drew me in is I just felt like there was something for everyone on campus, whether it be like the organization um, or the research opportunities that Vernon mentioned or just the communities um, like Sarge mentioned. I just felt like it would be easy for me to find a place for myself on campus. Okay, so at this time we have the floor is open for any students who are in attendance. Uh, you can ask any question if you want to uh, cater your question towards a particular student who might have mentioned something that triggered something for you. Uh, this is the time you can drop your question in the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask a question. Don't be shy. It can be about anything, anything at all. <laughs> All right, we're looking for leaders now. Well, you're all warming up to questions. I just want to let you know that we talked about a lot of good information, and I've been trying to keep up and posting links of everything that's been mentioned over the chat. So for reference, later on, you can always copy and paste that in the chat in your, in your, in your notes. So keep looking at that chat. We're trying to do our best to put all the information we're talking about. I believe someone put a question in the chat. Uh, first question was, uh, when does Spectra typically begin? What month? I don't know if Rochelle's still on here. I can answer that, but yes. I'll let her Yes, yeah, so Spectra begins in July. Um, we're in summer two session at the, at the college. And so Spectra would begin uh, July 11th. If we're on campus and we're keeping our fingers crossed that we will be Orientation would be Sunday, July 11th, and the program will wrap up on August 11th. So it's approximately four weeks. And we had another question, are the professors usually helpful? So one of our students can answer that one. I'll, I'll go ahead and take this one. Um, I, hate to, I hate to use the term networking because I feel like it's very overused when talking about schools and whatnot but the small class sizes at CFC allow professors to really get to know you, to point out opportunities you may not have found on your own and kind of lead you in a direction or point out interesting things to you that I have not, I didn't even experience that in high school and my class sizes were small there as well. Um, I've had many professors reach out to me as Brianna was talking about, asking if I need help with things and whatnot. And they really take the time to get to know you not only as a student, but as a person to know who your where your interests are where you want to go and the beautiful thing is if they run across something they'll shoot you a quick email be like hey like I saw this volunteering opportunity that might be of interest to you so I would definitely say yes they are helpful beyond just academics to kind of add to that um having that help for nature it's definitely a two-way street though um, so I've always made the effort to build relationships with my professor and I find myself having those exact experiences that Sarge was just talking about. Um, I've gotten coffee with several professors. I've had professors tell me about random internships or different opportunities that exist and things I should apply for. Um, so when you come to the College of Charleston, make sure that you're also putting that foot forward. Okay. Oh. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, I also agree um, with them. Reaching out to your professors is really easy, especially when they have certain hours set up for you to contact them. They are in their office, well, during normal times, um, they are in their office ready for your students to come in. Usually you just give them a heads up and they're there for anything. Um, one of my professors that's the most busy, like, well, in my opinion, um, the most busy around campus, she's always like, it's so chill. She's always she always starts our conversations like, okay, what's up? Like, what's going on? And like, you just go from there and you figure out what your needs are. And the, she tries to meet you in the middle and and everything just works out. It's all about just reaching out to them and they're there to help you. Okay, uh, let's see in the chat, we had a question. Uh, for anyone in the Honors College, would you say it was a good choice to join? Um, I'll go ahead and start. I don't think I mentioned that, but I am a student in the Honors College. Um, I would say yes, it was great for me. Um, I know it provided me with a lot of structure that I don't think that I had the maturity to provide more for myself as um, a freshman. 
And I just feel like it really helped to mold me into the young professional that I am today. And it pushed me beyond limits that I, I didn't know that I was limiting myself um, in, in certain areas. So I definitely say it was a great business move for me. Um, I can talk about the Arms College as well. Um, I definitely agree that it was the right decision uh, back when I made it freshman year. So coming to CFC is already a great thing, right? We've been talking about this liberal arts education, uh, but the Honors College really just puts the cherry on top when it comes to that. Um, they're really big on interdisciplinary learning and kind of just approaching a problem at all of the different uh, corners that you can come at it. And I think that's really important as you move forward um, because it gives you not only a diversity of experiences, but a diverse way of thinking about problems and issues. And that's always gonna be a good asset wherever you go. Yeah, adding to what Vernon said, that diversity of thought is really great. The Honors College kind of offers classes that are a lot more interdisciplinary. So uh, last, I guess two years ago, actually now, me and Vernon actually took a class called Genetics and the Good Society. And it, it combined stuff that you learn in basic genetics and kind of brought it into the real world and saw the implications beyond what you can learn in a textbook. So in that sense, the Honors College exposes you to kind of applying what you're learning and pushes you to go out there in that sense. Okay, we're gonna take about two more questions. Uh, I saw someone ask what the MOVE program is. Okay, I can answer that one. So MOVE stands for Multicultural Overnight Visit Experience. Uh, obviously, we're in a pandemic time, so we're not doing anything overnight on campus, but the program's designed to uh, be a personal experience for minority students so they can come to our campus and find out what life at CFC could look like for them. Uh, during that program, we do a, a lot of different things. The, the greatest thing about it is that you get to interact with our, our student ambassadors. You get to live in a dorm overnight. When we were doing overnight, uh, we you, uh, you eat meals on campus. You get to find out about the city of Charleston. You get to take a uh, get the, a classroom experience. So you get to sit in an actual CFC class to see what that's like. We do interactive workshops geared around diversity and uh, how to get involved on campus. Uh, and then we talk to you towards the end about your next steps. If you're a junior, this is what you should be doing. If you're a senior, which this is what you should be doing. This program has been very successful in, in um, opening our campus up to students who would normally come to our campus because it's an actual personal visit to our campus, as opposed to just an ordinary tour, you're getting a more intimate experience on our campus. So, phone call, but understand that this is a personal invite. It's gonna be an intimate experience. We do have two programs coming up in March for accepted students. So if any of you on this phone call are accepted students, you coming to the new programs. All right. And then let's see, we have time for about one more question. I'm gonna look who we have here. Uh, for those of you who have questions about the Spectre program, um, they are being answered within the chat. Uh, so I'm gonna move on to the other questions. Uh, someone had a question about uh, Greek life. I don't think Deronda had a chance to answer that yet if she wanted to jump on. It says, what exactly uh, do Greek organizations do? And also what kind of mentorship will I receive in, as an undergraduate? It was kind of two different than undecided major. Um, so that's a good, good question. And I am so glad that someone asked before they arrived at the college. Each of the Greek organizations that I mentioned during my presentation has a mandate from their national organization. So their national organization every four years tells them what programs they will um, commit to for those four years. Um, so it may be uh, doing something for outreach globally. Um, we've had organizations on campus that made polo dresses for girls in Ghana. Um, we've had organizations whose philanthropy was um, March of Dimes and they've collected funds to support those organizations. We've had organizations who were collecting eyeglasses, shoes for underserved populations. We have organizations like Lambda Theta Phi and Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity and Phi Beta Sigma that feed the homeless 
in the Charleston community every single Sunday. It looks a little different because it's a pandemic, but basically all organizations are asked to be of service to their communities. So what that looks like at the College of Charleston may look a little different at another college. I will say that our Greek organizations have done an amazing job being a support to our very own students. We have something called Pep Supper where all organizations uh, raise money or they provide food in mass quantities that has literally been able to help our Cougar Pantry for students who are in need. So when you're thinking about joining a Greek organization, not only do you want to wear the letters, but you wanna make sure that you're providing community service to the College of Charleston community and the communities that the organization serves. Great. Uh, so to conclude our uh, student panel, I just wanna to say to you guys, when you think about the College of Charleston, I want you to think about what you heard from these students tonight. And one word that just kept coming to my mind when they was talking is just support, right? The main thing that, you know, I try to communicate to families that students, minority students that I'm recruiting to the College of Charleston is that your child will be supported at the College of Charleston. And how do I know that? Because of we, because I am at the forefront of the support that they will, they will receive. Um, so I took my, my 11 years at the College of Charleston building relationships all across campus so that when students that look like you guys on this call come to this campus, you will understand what resources are here for you. I want to end on that and I want to introduce uh, my colleagues, Michelle McDowell and Erin. Thank you, Mr. Grimmage. Erin, are you on as well? No. Yes, I'm We're here. Going in and out. Perfect. Yeah, Perfect. sorry about that. I was uh, having technical problems. No, you're good. You're good. Well, again, welcome, students. And I know you have. Um, heard a wealth of information tonight about so many resources and so many things that you can expect once you get to the campus. Um, at this time, we want to just um, tell you about your next steps as a whole in order to get to where those students that you just heard from, you want to walk in their shoes. So the first thing is you should have received, and Arian is putting um, links in the chat for you for a quick um, reference there. Um, your next step link is right there in the chat, but you also receive this information um, in your acceptance packages as well as your acceptance emails. Um, so we wanna make sure that you uh, don't miss a step in your process thinking about or preparing for your enrollment deposit. Um, and in those next steps, it tells you step-by-step step how to make that deposit. Um, if that is an issue that you are having, please reach out to your counselor um, or a counselor on campus so that we can um, have a discussion with you and talk about that um, and see how we can assist you in making sure you get that done. Setting up your CFC email and access to your portal. Students, this is very important. This, our information that we're sending to you about what you need to do, how to stay connected to the institution. It's coming through your CFC email and your portal. So all of that, all of those steps are in that, um, your admission information that you received also in the link that Arian put in the, in the chat. If you're having problems connecting, with your CSC portal, please reach out in and let us know. Also, housing, your housing applications are now open. You can apply for housing now. Um, so please go out there and do that. Um, the deadline in order to do housing as well as your enrollment deposit is May 1st. What May 1st means is that we guarantee you housing up until May 1st. If you deposit after May 1, you do run the risk of not being able to have um, the option of staying on campus, okay? So we want to make sure that if you need to live on campus, you have that option. So make sure you get that deposit in by May 1, okay? And register for our upcoming virtual admission events. Um, I'll let Devin talk a little bit about that as well, but we have a lot of events coming up to keep you informed about the great things that are going on and what you can expect once you get here. So we need for you to sign up for those uh, particular events. Financial aid, you can expect to um, probably see your financial aid award packages probably between the first and second week of March. We're hoping that that information will be in your portals. Um, but if you have not completed your FAFSA, you need to get that in 
like immediately. That is like really late if you haven't done that so far. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let Aaron chime in and talk to you about your final transcripts and orientation. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, just remember so far we probably have uh, your uh, non complete uh, transcripts. So uh, when you graduate, please uh, make sure to send us your final uh, high school transcripts, uh, official transcripts. Uh, you can do that through parchment or you can have your school um, mail it directly to us. Um, and then don't forget to uh, register for orientation. It's going to be virtual this year. Uh, go to your Mike Charleston account. Um, I, I dropped the link on the chat and look for the academic services tab. Uh, and, send, and then scroll to the orientation box and click orientation registration. So please don't forget to do that. Um, I'll drop the uh, Mike Charleston link so everybody has it. And the um, deadline for PAPSA is March 1st. So it's it's pretty close. It's just in a couple of weeks. Okay, awesome. Just to kind of reiterate what um, Ari was saying about your final transcripts, we must have your final high school transcript with your graduation date um, and your final GPA. So if you are on state scholarship, if you're receiving Hope Life or Palmetto Fellows, we need that information so that we can make sure that your award gets on your account. Okay, so please do this. Make sure that you send in those final transcripts um, once you graduate. Also, if you are taking any dual enrollment classes, um, courses. We need those transcripts from the institution in which you're taking those um, college courses with. Your high school um, school counselors will not send that information. They do not have access to those transcripts. So you must contact that two-year institution that you're taking those courses with and make sure that you request for them to be sent to the campus. Okay, so at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Devin just to talk to you a little bit about our admission events and those things that are coming up that we need you all to make sure that you um, register for. Thank you, Michelle. And I just want to say thank you again to all of our panelists tonight um, and our current students who serve to answer your questions. Um, hopefully this evening has been informative and given you some great insight into the um, you know, initiatives that we have in place at the college to continually make the environment here um, inclusive and, and really representative of our student population. As Michelle mentioned, we have a whole host of virtual events going on this spring. Um, it's unfortunate that we can't be together in person, but we are doing our best to offer um, virtual connection and continuing to, to provide that support as you make your final decision on where to enroll this fall, which hopefully will be with us. Um, so we have a few things actually happening this week. Um, on Thursday night, we have our admitted student town hall. Um, again, that's for students and families. So have your parents, your older siblings, whomever is important to you in making this decision process tune in with you. Um, we encourage you to pre-submit your questions, but we'll be taking questions live. Um, and it's gonna be with some of the, the VIPs of the college. So um, the president, senior leadership team members, et cetera. So we hope you all will tune into that. Um, we have two admitted student virtual expanded days on Saturdays in March. Uh, and we'll also be hosting some virtual school showcases. So you can meet for some one-on-one -on -one experience with each of our six academic schools. Um, so there are a lot of options and a lot of ways to really learn more about the college um, with a more in-depth focus um, as you finalize your admissions decision. And not to forget that we will be hosting the round two of the um, CFC inclusion session uh, in March. So be on the lookout for that second date as well. Um, but that concludes our event for the evening. Again, thank you all for joining us. Um, we are thrilled that you took the time out of your busy Zoom schedule to Zoom in with us. Um, and again, if you have questions for any of the panelists that were on this evening, that contact information has been dropped in the chat. So hopefully you can take a look at that. Um, keep it in your index for reference later. And uh, we're always here for you. Have a good night, everyone. Stay well. Take care, guys.